the bidding. Brethren, we are gathered here before Almighty God to commemorate the founding of this school and to show ourselves mindful of those who have served it and been served by it through the years and have transmitted it to our keeping. Wherefore, remember that all good things do come from God. Let us offer our thanksgiving to our Heavenly Father and dedicating ourselves anew to his service, approach him in the words that Jesus taught us. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Well, welcome everybody, from wherever you are in the world, to our first ever virtual Founders Day service. And let's hope that this is very much the last time that we'll meet in this way, because we're missing you terribly being here amongst us for your annual reunion. Like Speech Day earlier this year, we have filmed a few set pieces and we have tried to stay true to the traditional Founders Day order of service. We start with meditations on the school from two upper sixth formers, Sophie Fowler and Dan Savage. This is followed by the tribute that was actually given in 2006 by former pupil Mrs Lorna Pound. Lorna was a niece of the school's founders, Miss May Jacoby and her sister Miss Helen Sheehan Dare. Lorna was a pupil at Battle Abbey School from 1936 to 46 and sadly passed away earlier this year. The tribute that she wrote will be read by Gemma Joyce who runs our BAFPA uh, Former Pupils Association. So thank you for taking the time to join us and we hope you enjoy reminiscing about the time that you spent as students at Battle Abbey School. Thank you. Teaching at the Abbey has been going for nearly a hundred years since the school moved in in 1922. It has remained a constant through world wars, fires and now a global pandemic. I am sure the Abbey will persevere through much more long after we're gone. Whilst the Abbey won't forever remain a constant in our lives, it will for sure live on in our memories, as I'm sure it does in many of yours. Our Abbey journey began back in Year 7 in 2014. Since then we've made many a memory during our time here. And whilst these experiences we're encountering in our final year aren't the ones we're expecting, they'll still be ones we treasure. Having been appointed as one of the school guardians, I'm excited to see the memories we're going to create. We've made memories on the sports field, in the classroom, during breaks and lunches in the Abbot's Hall or library, in the sixth form common room in Martlet Cafe, though we probably can't detail memories like those in a day like Founders Day. But for us, we can't talk about our time at the Abbey without mentioning our time in the pack. Attending the choir from the start of our time here has allowed us to perform in many events, whether it be even song in the ruins, performing in school musicals, and my favourite of all, seeing carols at the conquest with the chamber choir. These all really stand out to us. Christmas at the Abbey has always been important to us, whether it was carols around the fire or singing a rather off-pitch rendition of Mariah Carey at Christmas dinner whilst launching paper napkins at teachers. Sorry, Mr Mercer. The latest tradition of pantomimes have also become a new highlight, especially as I'm now one of the heads of St Mary's. Although I know we won't be able to do the same this year, I really hope we can find a good alternative, though I do think I've now seen enough cross-dressing to last me a good few years. Sports is also something that is central to the Abbey experience, however much we complain about it in the dreaded bleep test. Whilst we are not as involved as others throughout our time here, it has undoubtedly presented us with a great sense of community, even if it may not seem like it when you've got someone sprinting towards you with a hockey stick. Interhouse sports days have been great fun for us, no matter our ability, or lack thereof. We particularly remember Dr Spencer having to join the St Mary's Ultimate Frisbee team in Year 8 because everyone seemed to have lost the ability to catch or throw. Despite these questionable shows of athleticism, the social element of sports at the Abbey is something we will remember for a long time. My experiences in the MFL department over the years have also been very memorable. As a class at GCSE, I have to admit we were not the best behaved, but I enjoyed these lessons so much that I came to realise that I could not picture the rest of my journey at battle without Spanish. 
I attended language trips both to Madrid and Barcelona. These are the first times I left the country without my family, but I felt so at home with my classmates. These memories I've made during Spanish are the ones that really stick out to me when reflecting upon my time here. Whether it's having the subjunctive stuck in my head whenever I hear Beyonce, or not being able to even read the word flamenco without hearing Mr. Smallman's ole in the back of my head. It's these small things that have made our experience at Battle Abbey so unique. These have been some of our memories that will for sure stay with us for the rest of our lives. Some of you may have similar memories to us, or have completely different memories of your experience at the Abbey. All of them are incredibly unique, and I'm sure will be with you for the rest of your lives. And I'd hedge my bets that the Abbey out will outlast all of our memories, though. Battle Abbey School must of necessity begin with the Abbey itself. It is not only a magnificent and noble edifice, it is also a national shrine. Even so, as one writer said, and I quote, as soon as you pass through the gateway, you are in no doubt that it is a school first and a national shrine a long way after. That observation pays tribute, I think, to my two aunts, who were the founders of the school and to whom the school will always be indebted for its special character and function. When my aunts moved their first school, St Ethelreda's, from its seaside Bexhill home to find more space in Battle Abbey in 1922, they must have realised that the Abbey might present an awesome aspect to a young child passing through the gateway for the first time. From experience, they knew that children can only grow and prosper where they feel at home and en famille. So how was this bulwark of Romanesque and Gothic architecture to be made to feel like a home? Firstly, Mrs Jacoby, as principal, chose not to live in a remote headmistress's office. She conducted the day-to-day -day running of the school from her sitting room, just off the abbot's hall in the former abbot's kitchen. And her bedroom was at the top of the library stairs. Despite the monastic connections of the building, the girls did not eat in a refectory or even a dining hall, but in a dining room, where Mrs Jacoby and the staff ate with the girls. Upstairs, there were no dormitories with serried ranks of beds, but bedrooms with small numbers of beds, dressing tables, and space for personal possessions. The terminologies were thus homely and familiar. When I arrived at the Abbey in 1936, I slept in Dormitory 23, and to my delight, one of my lifelong friends who slept there with me is here at Founders Day in 2006, today. If one feels at home and relaxed, one makes good and lasting friends. As well as being comfortably housed as most families would wish to be, we girls were at ease in other ways too. Albeit discouraged from shouting, we were always given a voice and were encouraged to take part in the running of the school. In form meetings and house meetings, we would have our say. We knew it was our school. We learned to feel responsible for it and to promote its well-being and the well-being of others. Each individual counted and was to be treated with courtesy and consideration. If we fell short, and we often did, there were, of course, sanctions, but rewards were far more common and both were appropriate. A cooperative spirit prevailed. My two aunts had wisdom. They also had a vision and were innovative. Ours was one of the first schools to adopt the Dalton Assignment System. This encourages independence from direct teaching and helped to foster curiosity and self-sufficiency, both vital in further and higher education as well as in everyday adult life. Our school was no cloistered ladies' seminary. My aunts made sure that we were, we we were made well aware of the wider world. The table in the hall always carried a variety of newspapers and journals. On Saturday evenings, there were lectures by outside speakers, and each week's timetable included current events. However, the 30s were trying times with the depression, the abdication, and the constant threat of war. My Aunt May, Mrs Jacoby, was keenly concerned with the work of the League of Nations and the struggle for world peace. Even so, life did not always run smoothly or peacefully at the Abbey. Two major crises affected the even tenor of its life. 
In 1931, the Great Fire destroyed much of the fabric of the building and its contents but lives were spared as there had been regular fire practices with a system of whistles and runners. Consequently, the abbey was evacuated swiftly and smoothly. Alas, no such preparatory exercises could come into play when in 1940, following the debacle at Dunkirk and the threat of invasion, the abbey was commandeered by the military. At almost no notice, the school had to leave. Most girls lived sufficiently near to be gathered up by their parents. Others, like me, lived further afield and had to wait upon events. At that time, I was sleeping in dormitory 25, the first bedroom on the top landing, and was dispatched rapidly along the corridor to Eiffel Tower, another dormitory, with one or two others. Before bedtime had arrived, however, young Tommies with their palliases, straw mattresses, and kit bags were moving into 25. Some tomfoolery ensued, I remember, including a minor pillow fight until the stern eye of the matrons quelled both girls and Tommies. There followed a brief interlude at home on Teesside with my parents, but because the steelworks along the banks of the River Tees were prime targets for the Luftwaffe, it felt that I should be safer and get more sleep if I rejoined the school, which was by now rehoused in Devon alongside my cousin, John Jacoby's preparatory school for boys, Vine Hall. A reduction in pupil numbers in both schools meant that there was room for the two schools to operate side by side, albeit with different timetables and different bells. It was very much like the film, The Happiest Day of Your Life. Indeed, we had a wonderful war and were carefully sheltered from its chief horrors by those in charge of us. Inevitably, we had to adopt to new and often curious circumstances, but the abnormal soon became the norm. Children are thankfully very adaptable, and we were set good examples in this respect, not only by my two aunts, but also by the many members of staff who remained faithful to the school and ensured its continuity and our safety for the next five years. Never did the school motto, faith is all, underpin the life of the school more aptly than during World War II. The war years were indeed a separate chapter in all our lives. More can be ready, sorry, more can be read about the Abbey's sojourn at Killerton Park in Devon in June Parker's excellent history of the school. My time at the Abbey, like Caesar's Gaul, was thus divided into three parts. We eventually, in 1945, returned to the Abbey and it was then a case of all hands to the pump to try to banish the scars of military occupation. Yet some remain to this day and are a reminder of that episode in the Abbey's chequered history. This year, 2006, the National Trust is emphasising for us that history matters and is urging us to pass it on. This I have tried to do, if only in a small degree. It is difficult to condense 10 years into approximately 10 minutes. So to conclude, I mind the words of the 18th century writer who said, education is what remains when things we have learned have been forgotten. To this idea, although it is like most ideas, debatable, I subscribe. Learning fills us in, education draws us out. I am forever grateful to my two aunts for not only helping me to acquire necessary skills, but more importantly, to develop standards and precepts which have helped me through life, whether in the bringing up of my own family or the, in the teaching and guiding of others. I thank the headmaster and governors for inviting me to be here today. I am enjoying this visit as much as I enjoy all my visits to the Abbey. It is always like coming home.
the school prayer. O Lord, make us instruments of thy peace. Where there is hatred, may we bring love. Where there is injury, forgiveness. Where there is discord, harmony. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. May we ourselves seek to understand rather than to be understood, to console rather than to be consoled, to love rather than to be loved. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in forgiving that we are forgiven, it is through dying that we are born to eternal life. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you all so much for joining us today for our first ever virtual Founders Day. And please, if you, if you receive this virtually um, and you've got a network of former Battle Abbey pupils, please uh, send them the link. We'd love as many people as possible uh, to, uh, to reconnect with this famous and important tradition at the school. Uh, hopefully, we'll see you all back at normal uh, next uh, October uh, for our Founders Day 2021. And then the following year, a big milestone for the school and in the school's history. We'll be celebrating 100 years of the school being here at the Abbey. The school of course was founded in 1912 but moved to the Abbey in 1922. So lots to look forward to in the future uh, for our, our school, for the wider school community and of course for our nation. So in the meantime uh, stay well, keep in touch and we hope to see you uh, in person next year. Thank you again very much. Bye-bye.